One of the most powerful new features in Power Surfacing 2.0 is the ability to constrain the Sub-D meshes to SOLIDWORKS features. In this example, we've rolled back the feature tree so you can see a few ways the constraint system can be used. I've started with an image sketch and built a few of my SOLIDWORKS features as anchors. The first Sub-D will be constrained to a simple analytic, an extruded circle with a bit of a draft. The process is as follows. Create a new Sub-D, scale it, and move it and rotate it into position. When using constraints, remove the face where the mesh will join up. Switch to Control Mesh Display so you can see where the vertices are and position the vertices close to the targeted edge. Now you will need to select the constraint surface or surfaces. In the Power Surfacing tab, from the Constraints drop-down, select Import Reference, and pick the surface or surfaces to constrain the Sub-D edges to. In this case, it is just a simple surface, and accept. Now we select the open edges created from the deleted face, and from the drop-down, this time choose Constrained Edge. The vertices snap down to the edge. In the Sub-D display, you can see that the edges have been constrained as well. You can move the vertices around, but they will remain constrained. The edges update as soon as you let go of the mouse button and then you can model the rest as usual. I've already got a finished version, so I'll cancel out of this one. Now you're probably wondering what would happen if the reference feature changed. Let's adjust the ring. When you're ready, you will need to use Update Reference. As most changes will require tweaks in the Sub-D, you should update from edit mode. In the same drop-down, select Update Constraint. This doesn't fit my template sketch, so I'll revert the change and update the reference surface again. The base part of the drill is a bit more complicated because it has hard edges. Wherever you have a hard edge, you must have a vertex on the Sub-D to meet up to it. The Sub-D's edge should also be creased or hard. With the base, I've used Create Border to retain what will eventually be a parting line. Before moving on to the handle, I knit the base together and add the fillets. The top of the handle is a simple edge constraint to a single face or surface. On the bottom end, the back rolls over the back side of the base with edges constraining to multiple faces. So far, you've seen the constraints with their default tangency. By selecting the ring of faces around the constrained edges, you can manually set the tangency angle and strength. And yes, you can also use the tangency angle adjustment to set draft for your parting lines. Once again, I'll just cancel out so we can move on. And I'll do a bit of trimming and knitting to put everything together. Now is a good time to turn off the image sketch. At this point, I could do the rest of my SOLIDWORKS details. But, this is power surfacing. 
That means we can go back and tweak things. The handle is a good candidate for LOD, or level of detail. Let's edit it. I'm going to go into level of detail 2 and add some finger grips. Here's the good part. When I exit level 2, the edits remain, but I'm back to level 0 where I can continue to make those large soft changes. And the edits are offset to the new location. While we're here, we can also check out another new feature, the curvature display. The beauty of this one is that you can edit and see the curvature change at the same time. If you decide you don't like the grips added by the level of detail, you can simply go back in and clear the current level, in this case level 2. And I'll cancel out of these changes instead of converting. And now I can go ahead and add my extra SolidWorks features. And then add some details to finish the drill. Be sure and check out our other 2.0 feature videos along with power surfacing RE.